Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, I'm your host, Mrs. M. And if you haven't, make sure you click the link below. That way you can subscribe to my channel and not miss out on anything you need to scale your cleaning business to six figures and beyond. How? So in today's video, I'm gonna start right in and we're going to cover no bid or bid. Should you bid on a contract or should you not? Now this is talking specifically about government cleaning contracts. And the average person, the average cleaning contractor could take anywhere up to 18 months, 18 months, ouch, in order to find a government cleaning contract. So my goal is to make sure through these videos that I give you what you need to prepare and to make sure that you know what is going to be a really great fit so that you're not running and chasing after every contract becomes available. I know in the beginning when you're first getting out, first getting started, you know, kind of getting acclimated with everything, you may feel that if you're not chasing after every bid opportunity, you're gonna lose out, but it's just the opposite. You wanna really, really focus and you want to niche down to one area. And I always say, choose three agencies. So let's look at that for a second. Every bid from $3,000 to $150,000 has to be awarded to a small business. Now a small business, you can actually do a self-certification through your SAMS.gov when it asks, depending on your NICS code. Now I know for our NICS code, which is 561720, which is janitorial, you have to have under $19,500,000 annual revenue to be considered a small business. Well, I'm quite sure a lot of you that are looking at these videos are not even concerned about making sure that you're over that threshold. That's the threshold that you have to be under in order to be considered a small business. So automatically, it already has a why within the SAM saying, yes, you are able to be considered a small business. So a lot of, or not a lot, all of the bids that are 3,000 up to 1,500 are actually, they actually have to be awarded to small businesses, which means you, your company. So that's the good news. Now let's take a look and see what do we consider going after with the bid, no bid kind of concept. So if you write down these three things, it should sort of kind of help you figure out whether you should go after this bid or whether you should pass. Okay, let's go. Number one, definitely look at the time. I would easily suggest that if you've not done this before, do not look at going after any bids that are less than 30 days. If you've kind of went around and didn't see that the bid was available and now you're looking at a week or two weeks out, if you have not had an experience with putting bids together or you don't have a bid team, it is gonna be a challenge to get a bid together and have it look the way you want it to represent your company. So I would put a deadline no more than 30 days out and at the very least three weeks, but that would be the, the cutoff for me. That would be my recommendation. And that was the area that I felt comfortable with not bidding for anything that was past like three weeks had to be due sooner than three weeks. It was just too much to put together. It was stressful and it wasn't a good look. Number two, I want you to look at what profit margin are you looking at receiving? For this particular bid, is it really, really large is it something small? Is it going to take a lot for you to actually perform the bid? So you wanna look at once again, is there any special equipment that you're going to need? That should also kind of let you know when it comes to the bid or the no bid. If the time is under three weeks and if the bid looks like it's gonna require special equipment or it's gonna require something that's gonna eat up more of your profit, that would be a no bid for me. The third thing I'd pay attention to is am I going to need subcontractors? Now, I know that we all understand the relationship or some of us understand the relationship with subcontractors, but with the government, it's even more so because you have a lot riding on the line. As opposed to commercial, you may lose the contract, but it doesn't stop you from going out and getting another one. But with government, if you get a bad performance or if you have something that your subcontractors do not perform on and you lose that contract, yikes, that could really, really, really put you back for sometimes up to three years. So when you're looking at all three of these, really think of the bid, no bid. Don't look at going after everything. Narrow it down to maybe three agencies and start to look for expired contracts. Expired contracts are like a gold mine because you already have all the information. 
you know, who the agency is, when the contract started, when the contract is looking to end, to expire. Is this contract in a like a SAP, a simplified acquisition procedure? All of these are the items that you want to look for. And remember, $3,000 to $150,000 has to be a small business, has to be awarded to a small business. And then you can look at and see if this is like open competition. If it's open competition, then it means that it is not a set aside or a SAP, a small business, you know, acquisition, or I'm sorry, simplified acquisition procedure. This is one that's open market, open competition. Anyone could go after it. But start looking for expired contracts and finding out when, what, why, get all the particulars because that's going to put you in a better position. When you're going after these contracts, the thing you want to always remember is setting up a strategy. Don't just go, you know, kind of like by the seat of your pants and not have anything in place and understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. It always makes sense to have a strategy in place so that you go after it with the mindset of winning. So if you'd like to know more, I have a free masterclass tomorrow and it's brand new where we go into what? Bids and no bids and simplified ac acquisition procedures and, and micro purchases and sam.gov and on and on and on, all of these. So if you're interested, make sure you click the link to register. I'd love to see you there. Take no more than about 30, 45 minutes to go over everything you need to find out in today's market, in 2022, what you need to be competitive why either you're winning your first government bid or whether you're looking at this being your 10th. I'd love to see you there. So make sure you click to register and until next time, be safe. Bye-bye.